Hello everybody, I thought I would do another recording, since especially because the election's hotting up, and I noticed watching the individual constituency polling that reform have gone up between 5 and 10 percent, and as you can see there in the picture, Nigel Farage is holding out a uh, little sheet of their prospective seats. So from what I can tell, the most likely ones are Clacton, Skegness and Boston, Great Yarmouth, and also the seat of uh, Liz Truss's seat is definitely going, possibly to Labour, but there's a, a possibility it goes to reform candidate. Suella Braverman, who's down towards Southampton, definitely losing her seat. It's also changed in terms of Kemi Badenoch. I said she wasn't losing her seat, now she definitely is. So there's been quite a lot of change. But firstly, let's just have a look at a couple of the other things going on here. Another thing that I say, what I'm thinking is that the Lib Dems are going to perform far better than anyone is saying. So they're just to say, Nigel Farage is saying Ashfield, Barnsley, South, Boston and Skegness, I already mentioned it, Broadland and Fakenham, Burton and Utoxeter, Cannock Chase, Clacton, that's Nigel Farage's seat, definitely Cotswold North, we'll be checking that one, Fairham and Waterlooville, no idea where that is, Gosport, Great Yarmouth, I said Huntingdon, that's north of Cambridge, Cambridgeshire, Louth and Horncastle, Orpington, which is right on the southeast corner of London, interesting one that, Plymouth, Moorview, Skipton and Ripon, Suffolk South, Washington and Gateshead, very interesting up in the northeast. I know Hartlepool was a key area for Brexit because Richard Tice ran there, so it's very interesting that that should be on the list because those northeast areas are, are definitely great for reform to perform. Okay, that was something else I was looking at. Let's just take a look here. This is a kind of graphic, and as you can see, that's England roughly. Uh, you can see where Lib Dems are particularly strong in the West Country, and I think one of the reasons why is this area has low immigration, and it's not such an issue for people. They're more likely to switch from Conservative to Lib Dem. They're not as likely to go Labour, so you can see a lot of yellow. Also a lot of yellow in the kind of home counties to the southwest of London, sort of Surrey-ish going into Wilshire, they're going more Lib Dem. The um, Blues are Conservative, Reform is a light blue, and uh, Reform are far more likely to win seats on the East Coast. Couple of possibilities in maybe Birmingham in the Midlands as well, like that was the Barnsley constituency and some like that, obviously Scotland split. SNP are not going to do that badly in Scotland. They're holding on to a lot of votes. As you can see, I don't know if you can see there, that's meant to be part of London. In London, only Pinner and Ryslip will remain, North Ryslip, I think it is, in Pinner constituency will remain Tory. Everything else in London is going to either Labour or Lib Dems. Obviously no reform in London. I think there's one area of Birmingham that might go reform, otherwise all the major cities are pretty much going to be Labour strongholds, which you can see from that graphic. I've got another one for you. Um, that's the graphic of London you can see there. Those two areas that look, that's Pinner up there. Pinner and Ryslip, you can see it's blue for reform. These little, um, blue for conservatives. This little area here and here, that must be Orpington there. It could go reform and obviously they're thinking there's a possibility that county there could go Maybe that's Hornchurch. Could be Hornchurch there. Sorry, I'm a bit, I'm not too sure. Here's the West Midlands where they think there'll be one reform seat there. I'll have to check what actual constituency that was. And obviously West Yorkshire, um, Ripon was something that might go reform. Do have a look here. Uh, this is Liberal Democrat predicted areas all in the yellow. I think some are already held by them. The lighter areas are prospective gains. I think they'll be doing fairly well. So basically, I'm excited that to see the result. It will be groundbreaking to see reform win a lot of votes, but I no longer have the faith in Nigel Farage delivering, especially after the whole COVID thing and the stance he took. I feel at this stage, him and Trump are compromised. They've uh, been in the game too long, and you know what they say. When you sleep with dogs, you get fleas. I think they're really flea bitten right now. And if you look at the backers, the end of the day, look beyond them to the backers. It's going to be the same people who back Starmer. And while Trump and Farage will still talk about illegal immigration, they're both huge fans of legal immigration. And that's going to be where most immigration is coming from. Trump's talking about people come to university in the US. As soon as they get a degree, they're in with a green card. 
that's that's where a huge amount of immigration is coming from. Farage is very keen on uh, immigration from the former colonies. So is Tommy Robinson. As long as it's kind of not Muslim immigration, the, the Robinson clan and that are very, very keen on immigration as such. And immigration is still going to change everyone's lives. It's putting so much pressure on services. We have councils going bankrupt all over the country, not mowing lawns, doing the basics. It's the sewage system's not coping. I mean, they're literally shoving it in the sea. Uh, you couldn't make it up. So while, so that's why I say Trump and Rods, they were bad on the vaccine. They haven't um, successfully rolled that back. They merely mouthed on Ukraine. They totally gonna be up for war on Iran and that's why they want them in. Now, for example, the debate, Trump and Biden. We've known for five years Biden's seen off, but the normies are just being allowed to find that out. So they know the his press office, everyone knows, but they still put him up there. They could have pulled him years ago, but they want him to make a fool of himself because they want to pave the way for Trump. So you've got to think of it that way. You've got to say, well, wait a minute. Trump was having all these lawsuits. Yes because they know that the people bringing the lawsuits are so disgusting and odious to anyone on the conservative or on the right or most people, libertarians, that when odious people are going against him, you're gonna think, oh, well, I feel sorry for him. He's great because I hate those people. So it's great PR. And what all the lawsuits with Trump have done is keep him bang in the public eye. During the time Biden's in power, the whole hubba lubba -bub over the stolen elections die down. But Trump's still in the public eye because all the worst people are going after him. All the odious people in the New York Times are writing hit pieces on him. He's got these trials going on. In politics, bad publicity is almost better than good publicity, especially when it comes from the right people. There's no way Trump was ever going to go into prison because of those. those. It was show trials for his publicity, really, and it did him the world of good. Now, I still see tweets from Infowars saying, oh, they'll have to assassinate him. Oh, because he, he's, he's unstoppable. They're going to have to assassinate him or they'll find some reason to put him in jail. No, Miriam Adelson is not giving him $100 million because they're putting him in jail. Because she knows she's betting on a sure thing and she wants to be in there making sure she has a seat at the table and an influence. Hence goes the same for all his other backers and for Farage's backers. These backers aren't wasting their money on people who are going to be assassinated and go to jail. They want these people there. And they've got Trump primed for a time when they need his constituency to go to war, so they need him in power. No one's going to go to war for Biden. Trump's constituency are going to be the people who are more likely to fight a war. Same with Farage. That's why they need him to have a few seats. You can see David Vance, he's fallen for this whole fiasco. He says the BBC Question Time audience is relentlessly hostile towards Nigel Farage. Yeah, he says their hatred is visceral. Absolutely. It's meant to be like that because the constituency for reform hate the media. And when they see the media going at their man, it's going to shore up their support for him. What Nigel Farage has had through this campaign is unprecedented media attention. Whether it's been negative or positive, he's had attention and that's all that counts. Who's had no attention? George Galloway. Now, I don't agree with many of his policies or his workers' policy. He's a sitting MP. No one invites him to any debates because you know what? He's going to say things they don't want people to say. He's going to talk about what's really going on in Ukraine, in Gaza, in Georgia, in China. He's going to bring a new perspective to the table and that's the last thing they want you to hear. So you've got to think they obviously don't mind what Farage is going to say. He's going to say a certain amount of stuff and a certain amount of people are going to vote for him. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a Starmer government. It's a moot point. It's interesting intellectually. This poll here, poll suggests Labour majority of 272 with Conservatives only getting three seats and the referendum party getting 74, they say. Some people say the referendum could get as many as 99. I'm still sceptical. Um, they'll get definitely for Raj, maybe th three. Some people are saying there's some other great areas. It could be as many as 20. It'll, I'll, we'll see come the day. Now, I was shocked because I was looking on this excellent website, Electoral Calculus. I checked Daventry, which is an area I know well. It's to the west of Northampton, and it's just off the M1, and the constituency to the west of that would be um, Southam and Kenilworth and then Banbury further south. When I checked Daventry last night, it said reform were winning Daventry. Now that's changed. Suddenly it's Labour. But the other day it was reform. So that's very was very interesting. 
But we can check a few here. Um, I'd like to do that. Why don't we check Clacton? That's where Farage is running. Um, I know within form, uh, one of my clients is, is campaigning for reform, and I know reform extremely confident on winning a lot. But it takes a lot on the day. Look at Clacton, reform is walking at 72. So Farage has been having his rallies. He's really walking on it. Let's check um, Boston and Skegness, which I think Tice is running there, which, I mean, I don't like him or trust him at all. Nor Isabel Oakshot. As you'll know, Jackie Devoy tried all the time to warn her about the Medazalan thing. She's not interested. Yes, uh, Tice is winning the seat 61. He is just another... Um, you know, you look at the people he hangs out with at his backers. Like we talked about the other day, Charlie Mullins running for reform. I mean, come on. Um, you know, these people all have a lot in common. And that is Great Yarmouth. Let's check Great Yarmouth. I don't know if you can see these coming up. Great Yarmouth, that's a, a sure one. It says here prediction labor. But the other night they said reform. Reform on 31% labor on 52 other day when I checked it was the opposite. So these are changing. I wonder why a lot of reform seats have gone back. Because when I looked originally, there was only one for reform, and that was Nigel Farage. I looked last night, plenty for reform. Now it's gone back the other way. This is heavily being manipulated. Should we see who else we should check here? Yeah, so it's quite, it's quite interesting checking up on these. But I don't trust these people. They've let us down on big issues. They all take money from some of the people, right? And there's always common denominator on issues they don't talk about which Galloway will talk about uh, they all potentially pro-war candidates as well let's check one of these he had a Lib Dems doing well as that's the most wishy-washy party according to Galloway no one can stand the Lib Dems let's see what Cotswolds North is doing because they've got that on their list so we can check that one out seat explorer did I mention Liz Truss? She's Northampton Southwest or something. Cots, Cotswolds. Cotswolds North. She could lose her seat to reform. Sue Ella's definitely losing her seat, but I've forgotten what her exact... Cotswolds North, reform on 23, conservative on 47. So I'm not sure. That's another hope. But that's one they're hopeful for, obviously. Let's check. We check Boston. Let's check Barnsley South, because that would be an interesting one up in Yorkshire. And I would think there'd be some hope there. Lee Anderson's winning his seat. Barnsley, did I say north or south? <laughs> Barnsley North, I think. Uh, yeah. Barnsley, oh, it's Barn Barnsley South. Let's check if Barnsley South. So a lot of these on Nigel's list. Oh, we'll check Orpington as well, because that would be one of the few in London. They're saying Labour's going to hold that. Reform here they've got on, oh, 70%. So Barnsley definitely. Prediction reform. Yeah, Barnsley South. So there you go, guys. It definitely look Barnsley South are going to do it. Let's try Orpington. Do I have to put in? Oh, good. Don't have to spell the whole thing. So it's so tedious, you know. Let's see how Orpington is. Yes, prediction conservative. Let's see how well... Reformer only on 16, so obviously the candidate for Orpington feels pretty hopeful, but it doesn't look hopeful from that. Should we try Washington and Gateshead South? That would be interesting to see. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm back to saying that despite their optimism and despite quite a lot of positive signs last night on this particular website, now I'm not really seeing it. So maybe Labour have held it back. There's prediction Labour. And here they've got reform on 0%. So I don't know. Obviously, these stats must probably be totally wrong. Low turnout is definitely going to be one of the big factors in this as well. Let's try Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire. I think it would be interesting to see. I haven't uh, seen anything for that constituency. Huntingdon. So again, it's the theme of East Coast and some places in the North, but it's generally in the East. Predicted Labour. Here they've got reform on 22%, labor on 52 So a lot of these seats that, lay, that they gosport, we'll try that one. A lot of these seats that uh, reform are confident about don't look like it from this one. So I just wonder if they can really, I think they'll definitely get three or four. But uh, gosport, maybe that was uh, Suella Bravenan's former. We'll see if it says, it. no, carrying its conservative Hampshire Southeast and according to this reform only 14%. So you can see that uh, 
maybe a little bit of opt optimistic. But they certainly had a lot of coverage. Uh, I know people lie to pollsters and are more likely to lie if they're voting for reform, but we'll see what happens. Maybe a little bit of over-optimism. Again, what's it really going to change? And again, I think there are many, many themes where Nigel Farage is not going to provide um, adequate pushback. In a way, it's it's all a big red herring, and it is kind of exciting that these people are doing well because they talk a good game, but when you scratch the surface, um, it's pretty much the same old, same old in the way it's all going to break down.